The topic of inflammatory joint disorders is discussed in the screencast. You may find this topic in Chapter 6 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Describe the following inflammatory joint disorders. Bursitis and tendonitis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gouty arthritis or gout. Bursitis is inflammation of the bursa in response to a blow or frictional damage to one or more bursa. If you are familiar with the term water on the knee, that refers to bursitis of the knee. There are quite a few bursa located in the knee joint. Tendonitis is inflammation of the tendon sheaths that surround the tendons of a joint. Damage to the tendon sheath causes an inflammatory response leading to tendonitis. Arthritis is an inflammatory or degenerative disease of the joints. Arthritis as a whole is the most widespread crippling disease in the United States and is the number one cause of disability in the United States as well. There are many types of arthritis. There are over a hundred different types. We're only going to focus on the two most common types. Osteoarthritis is the most common type of chronic arthritis. As we age, the articular cartilage in our synovial joints becomes brittle and tends to break down. For that reason, osteoarthritis is often referred to as wear and tear arthritis. As the cartilage breaks down, the underlying bone tissue is exposed to the friction of a moving joint. That bone tissue contains quite uh, a large density of nerves which is responsible for the pain that comes with osteoarthritis. Also, as the bone tissue is damaged, the inflammatory response that results causes swelling. Osteoarthritis can also be caused to injury to a joint. Some of the factors that increase the risk of developing osteoarthritis include obesity, an increase in weight on a joint will increase the risk that the cartilage of that joint will break down and develop into osteoarthritis, particularly in the knees, the hips, and the ankles. Also, athletes that train intensely are also at an increased risk of osteoarthritis. And when I say athletes who train intensely, we're talking about something in the order of um, an Olympic athlete. Normal regular exercise does not appear to increase the risk of osteoarthritis. In fact, there is some indication that it might actually decrease the risk of osteoarthritis. There is no treat, excuse me, there is no cure for osteoarthritis. Treatment typically focuses on rehabilitation and physical therapy aimed at preventing disability. Drug therapy tends to focus on reducing pain or pain management, usually through non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, which are available over the counter. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. An autoimmune disease is a disease where the immune system attacks one's own body. With rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system attacks the joints. The reason for this is not completely understood. There is some belief that it's initiated by a viral infection. As the body attacks proteins of a virus, Viral proteins are, some viral proteins are very similar to the proteins found in synovial membranes. And as the body is sensitized against viral proteins, it's also sensitized against synovial membrane proteins. Thus, the immune system attacks the synovial membranes of the joints. That is one uh, theory as to what initiates rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is much more damaging to 
the joints in general, and therefore it's much more likely to result in crippling compared to osteoarthritis. In severe cases of rheumatoid arthritis, scar tissue infiltrates the joint cavity, and then it's calcified, essentially fusing the joint. That can lead to deformities of the joints, as shown in this picture of late-stage rheumatoid arthritis in the joints of the hand. Treatment for rheumatoid arthritis consists of using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Tylenol or ibuprofen, but also include using steroids to suppress the immune system as well as other immunosuppressive agents. In severe cases, surgery may be required to rehabilitate the joint. Gouty arthritis, or simply gout, is inflammation of the joints caused by uric acid crystals being deposited from the blood into the joints. For whatever reason, gout typically begins in the joint of the big toe. Now, some individuals just genetically have high circulating levels of uric acid crystals in their blood, and therefore it's understandable why they would uh, be at high risk for gout. However, there are other individuals who uh, get gout who have normal levels of circulating uric acid in the blood. So why some individuals get gout and others do not is not completely understood. There is no cure for gout, but there are treatments. Typically, they do involve lifestyle changes. There are some drugs that reduce the uric acid content of the blood. Some of the lifestyle changes that might be suggested by a physician would be no alcohol. Alcohol decreases the rate at which the kidneys remove uric acid from the blood. An increase in water intake will help the kidneys remove uric acid from the blood. Exercise also appears to help decrease the, uh, the incidences of painful bouts of gout. And a decrease in meat intake may also help as well. Uric acid crystals are a breakdown, a metabolic breakdown product of nucleic acids. Most of the nucleic acids in our diet come from meat products. Now let's review the objectives that this screencast was designed to help you achieve. Describe the following inflammatory joint disorders, bursitis and tendonitis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gouty arthritis or gout. The next screencast will cover selected topics on the axial skeleton.